grace and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We have gathered to witness these men vow to follow Christ more closely through the public profession of the evangelical councils of poverty, chastity, and obedience, as well as the Legion's proper vow of humility. They have heard Christ's call. They have experienced his love, and they now feel the urgent need to respond with a total gift of themselves. The whole of the liturgy of this Mass of religious profession explores the reality, the meaning, and the implications of this call and response. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Present, 
Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. A reading from the first book of Samuel. During the time, young Samuel was ministered to the Lord under Eli. A revelation of the Lord was uncommon and vision infrequent. One day, Eli was asleep in his usual place. His eyes had lately grown so weak that he could not see. The lamp of God was not yet extinguished, and Samuel, Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So Eli said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For his sake, 
I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found of him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in the hope that I may possess it since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said to his disciples, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Present yourselves those who are going to make their religious profession. Jacob Christopher Ringer. Present. Anthony Thomas Norton. Present. Sterling Grant Foley. Present. My dear brothers, What do you ask of God and his holy church? To consecrate myself to God as a legionary of Christ, in the service of the church and Raymond Christi. Thanks be to God. Today we celebrate the call. The call of Jesus Christ to leave everything and serve him. For many of us here, it's a great memory of years 
and we celebrate 40 years of the call here in Cheshire. Many fathers here from even different parts of the world who spent some time here in Cheshire following Christ and responding to the call. The call is a mystery. It's a mystery because it's a relationship. It's a relationship that requires a response. Response of faithfulness, honesty, trust, integrity. To hear the voice, listen to the voice, obey the voice, and follow it. It's a relationship with one person, Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, Jesus says that he who loves his life loses it. It's powerful. He who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Yet Jesus tells us elsewhere also, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. Plenitude, total joy. How do we reconcile hating one life with having life to the full? What does Jesus mean? In the original text of John's Gospel, we translate the word hate for the Greek word misale, for the humanists here, the scholars, be merciful with me. <laughs> it means to renounce one choice for another. It means to prefer one thing over another. So Jesus is saying here that in order to be truly alive, with Him. We need to love Him and only Him. He wants our entire heart. We can't be divided. We need to prefer one thing to everything else. And what is that one thing? It's not a thing. It's a person. Jesus Christ. He calls. So Jesus is looking for people to prefer him to everything. This is what we're celebrating today, brothers. Right. Jacob, Anthony, Sterling, my good brothers, and your brotherhood here of Legionaries. We celebrate, and with your parents. What work, behind the scenes work of your parents preparing you for this moment of a yes to the call of Jesus Christ. So, brothers, fathers, consecrated members, even lay faithful, we all get this. We all get the call, whether it's to be a legionary of Christ and profess poverty, chastity, and obedience, whether it be a call to do a diocesan priest and obey Christ and follow Him and and, and live a love completely for him or Marina. Same person, similar call. He wants our whole heart. So, how do we grow and persevere in this love, in this response to the call of Jesus Christ every day? The readings today give us three tips. One, Samuel. First reading gives us this initial tip in which at this time as the scripture says it was rare that the word of the Lord was heard <clears throat> in which there was no frequent vision the chosen people at this time had forgotten how to listen to the Lord they were misdirected 
They weren't fulfilling his plan. They weren't attentive to the voice. Were they praying? Were they contemplative? Did they have a life of silence? Young Samuel listened to the Lord. But a young man, not an adult. His whole being, his whole person becomes a deep listening to the voice of God because he desires in his heart to know his will. Young Samuel listens to the Lord and he hears and he repeats, responding, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. This is the first tip. The Lord awaits men and women who listen for his voice deeply and are ready to respond with love in a world of noise. What are we doing to create a space of silence and prayer and listening so each of us can respond with love to the voice of Christ? Courageous hearts that are not scared of the Lord's invitation. We celebrate this today. Hearts that trust. Hearts that are open. Open to God's presence in their life. Trusting and inviting courageously Christ's presence in their life. His action and power in their lives. Second tip. King David in the psalm, this is, which is his psalm, a man after God's own heart. He too is a listening man who can recognize the, the Lord's voice among the competing voices of the world. He thanks God for giving him an open ear and upon listening from his core, how does he respond? Behold, I come to do your will, O my God. Your law is written in my heart. King David, a leader of Israel, is leading his people in the art of listening. Not only listening, obeying, obeying the voice. Obedience in Latin means o audire, which means listening attentively. Right? Our prayer, our listening to the voice of God, must, mustn't be passive. Obeying is not passive, brothers. It's docile. It's a response to a relationship that we have with Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. He calls us. So David reminds us that when we listen to the Lord deeply, attentively, and our response is joyful, the Father will honor us. To you will is my delight, O oh my God. Second tip. Listen and obey. Be docile. Be proactive. Third tip. St. Paul, protector, patron of the Legion, and Ren Christie, says, I count everything as a loss of the surpassing, surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. He's willing to hate his life, to gain it. And how contradictory in the world today, right? To hate my life, right? In order to gain it and gain the intimacy and perfection in Jesus Christ. That is the path that Paul calls us to. He says, because we listen to the Lord, because we obey His loving call, His will for us. We share everything with Him. And not just the suffering, not just the cross. But the miracles, the healings, the conversions, the new life in Jesus Christ, 
the resurrection. Tomorrow we celebrate the feast day of St. Maximilian Kolbe, great saint in the church, evangelizer of Europe, who, as we know, as many of you know, was martyred in Auschwitz in World War II. When he arrived at Auschwitz, a guard saw him in his Franciscan habit with his rolling beads and said to him, Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Father Colby said, Yes, I do. The guard struck him and repeated, Again, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And he gave the same answer. And the guard kept beating him until he was unconscious. When the guards condemned ten prisoners shortly after to death by starvation, one of them shouted out, My wife and my children. St. Maximilian stepped up and said, I will take his place. He led the other prisoners in prayer as they waited to die. He led them listening. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, will not have life. The guards got impatient, waiting for him to starve to death. But he persevered in prayer, in Christ, in the relationship, in responding to the call with confidence and trust and with faith, humanly suffering without a doubt, but in love. He obeyed the Lord and gave his life for the family and was killed by lethal injection. St. John Paul II said, he won a victory of love. There is no greater love than to give my life for my friend. Brothers, we're celebrating the call and this mutual love and faithfulness in our relationship with Christ. One of my favorite prayers is from St. John Newman. His prayer about the mission and the response to the mission. It's an example of responding to the call to be holy. And this is how it goes. Lord, you have created me to do some definitive service. You have committed some work to me that you have not committed to another. I have my mission. I may never know it in this life but I shall be told it in the next. Somehow I am necessary for your purposes, as necessary in my place as an archangel in his. If indeed I fail, you can raise up another, as you could make the stones children of Abraham. Yet I have a part in this great work. I am a link in a chain a bond of connection between persons. You have not created me for naught. I shall do good. I shall do your work. I shall be an angel of peace, a preacher of truth in my own place, while not intending it. If I do but your commandments and serve you in my calling, my sickness or perplexity or sorrow may be necessary cause of some great end which is beyond me. You may throw me among the strangers, you may make me feel desolate, make my spirit sink, hide the future from me. But you know what you are about. Whether we reflect on the example of the prophet Samuel, or St. Paul responding to the call, St. Maximilian, St. John Newman. 
Their impact on the culture and the world is really grounded in one word. Bullies. Responding to the call to holiness. To be another Christ. Once someone asked Cardinal Newman, which is greater, a cardinal or a saint? Newman reflected for a few seconds and then replied, Cardinals belong to this world, saints to heaven. Holiness is all that matters. My dear brothers, by water and the Holy Spirit, you have already been consecrated, consecrated to God's service. Are you resolved to unite yourselves more closely to Him by the new bond of religious profession? I am. In your desire to follow Christ perfectly, are you resolved to live chastity for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, to choose a life of poverty? and to offer the sacrifice of obedience? I am. May Almighty God grant you His grace to fulfill what you resolve. Amen. Amen. servants of yours who are resolved to dedicate their lives to you by making profession of the evangelical councils in the presence of your church today. Mercifully grant that their manner of life may bring glory to your name and further your love and plan of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thomas Norton, Jacob Christopher Ringer, in the, in the presence, presence of the Most Holy Trinity, Our Lady of Sorrows, and St. John the Evangelist, through you, Reverend Father, promise and vow to Almighty God to live for two years in poverty, chastity, and obedience, in accordance with the institution of religious life in the Church, as expressed in the constitutions of the Congregation of the Legionaries of Christ. To fulfill these vows, I put on my trust in the help of God's grace, the infinite merits of the heart of Jesus Christ, and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and our patron saints and protectors, all of whom I humbly invoke on this day. I also promise and vow to Almighty God not to undertake any action to obtain or keep, either for myself or others, government positions or assignments in the congregation. Thanks be to God. Be your sole possession always. Hail across our only hope. Receive this crucifix. May Christ crucified be your sole possession always. Hail across our only hope. Receive this crucifix. May Christ crucified be your sole possession always. Hail O cross, our only hope. The renewal of vows will not take place. This can be found on page 25 of your booklet. Come. 
for those who are to renew their vows. Tiago Lohan Ferraz. Isaías Rodríguez Andrés. Elijah Joseph Mahali. José Noel Flores Valeria. Gustavo Alfonso Jiménez Alvarado. Miguel Herrera Chávez. In the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, our Lady of Sorrows and the Saint of the Evangelists, the three year Reverend Father, promise and vow to Almighty God to live for three years in poverty, chastity, and obedience, in accordance with the institution of the religious life of the Church, as expressed in the constitutions of the Congregation of the Legionaries of Christ, to fulfill these vows, I will put my trust in the role of God's grace. The infinite merits of the heart of Jesus Christ and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and our patron saints and protectors, all of whom I humbly call on his name. I also promise and vow to Almighty God not to undertake any action to obtain or keep, either for myself or others, government positions or assignments in the congregation. Thanks be to God. knowing that without God we can do nothing, we place our petitions in the hands of our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that to be a source of renewal and bring the faithful to a deeper union with Christ, serving as a witness to the Church, the shepherds, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. for political and world leaders, that they will guide those under their care of prudence and justice, following the Church's teachings and example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those living under the shadow of war and persecution, especially in Ukraine and Yemen, may they find the light of God's presence shining in their triumphs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the courageous and generous witness of Christians, the light of the Gospel will spread an ever greater number of people and give them the hope by which we are saved. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer, for the newly professed brothers and those who renewed their vows today. May they receive the grace they need to live a commitment, the commitments of love that they have placed in Christ's hands before the church and their legionary family. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer, that the families of the press will be blessed a hundredfold for the generous gift of the vocation they have nurtured and which they offer to God today. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Merciful and most loving Father, we entrust our knees to the infinite merits of the heart of Jesus Christ, that he may present them to you and gain us salvation through his intercession. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted for God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Here, in the celebration of the Eucharist, Christ sacrifices himself for us out of love. Religious profession is also a sacrifice, not only for the legionaries who have made their vows, but for their families as well. This offering of our life is lifted up on the altar and united to Christ's redeeming sacrifice. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He is the unblemished flower who sprang from the root of the Virgin and declared the pure of heart blessed, teaching by his way of life the surpassing worth of chastity. He chose always to hold fast to what is pleasing to you, and becoming obedient for our sake, even until death, he willingly offered himself to you as a perfect sacrifice and a fragrant sacrifice. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and of these your servants, which we make to you on their profession day. Sanctify this offering in your mercy, 
so that those who by your gift have dedicated their lives to you today may at the glorious coming of your Son be admitted to the joy of the eternal past. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, and his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, there is a resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly confidence, and to accept them as one you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, with this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, <coughs> Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things of you. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. 
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
pray. May the mysteries we have received fill us with joy, O Lord, and grant that by their power these your servants may faithfully fulfill the duties of a religious life that they have begun and may offer you willing service through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those who have responded to Christ's call by professing their vows echo Mary's response to her call. I am the lowly servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Thank you.